What is up guys, how are you doing? So in this video, we're building something highly interesting. We're building our own database from scratch. You heard it right, we're building our own database from scratch using Golang. It's going to be a JSON database. So it's almost like uh, MongoDB, it's quite modern. And so you can think of it as building your own MongoDB from scratch. But we're also going to take a lot of inspiration from CockroachDB, which is another database uh, built uh, with, with the help of Golang. It's not a JSON database, but it's built with the help of Golang. So we'll be taking inspiration because it handles data integrity issues uh, in a very interesting uh, manner. It, it uses mutexes to handle data integrity issues. All right. So uh, that's something um, that, that we'll be building. So uh, what I'll do is I'll first show you, I'll give you a demo of what we're going to build. And then I'll show you using a diagram uh, on how we're going to build it, the, the whole approach. And then we'll actually start writing the code to actually build the whole database. All right. So let's get started. So I'm on a terminal now where we'll be running the program. And this is the program that we'll be running. It's in Visual Studio Code. And here you'll st see a new folder that will be created automatically. And that folder will have all our JSON files of the database. All right. So let's do that. So let's say go run main.go. It takes a while. And it creates all these different records for us. All right. And how can we verify? We can go here. We can go inside this folder that was just created for us right now. And he, there here are all these people that we've just created. These are different records. So Albert is a person and he has uh, uh, these values like name, age, contact, company, address, and address itself is a struct which has all these different values. So it's a nested object. You know, if, you, uh, if, if you're very familiar with JSON, you know, this is a nested object. This is uh, the complete JSON object. And there are multiple JSON uh, objects and this is the entire collection. So we can even make multiple collections. You can have a single collection if you want. You can have multiple records in a single collection. This is completely like like MongoDB. I mean, if this is not like MongoDB, then I don't know what it is. So we're going to build this from scratch. Uh, as you can see, it's going to be quite a substantial project. So uh, wear your seat belts and let's get started. But before that, actually, let me show you what we're going to, uh, how we're going to approach the entire project. All right. So whenever you start uh, with a coding project, don't start coding directly. Uh, put it on out on paper or on draw.io or any some visual tool so that you know how you're going to approach it. All right. That's something that I always recommend. And that's the difference between a, a junior developer and a very senior developer is because the very senior developer or, or you know, the architect, he basically uh, plans out everything visually before uh, starting out anything because he can then see the challenges uh, and, and what all he has to do and also the, the challenges that might appear in the, pro in the program. All right. So this is not, I won't call this a complete architecture, uh, you know, diagram, but this is because I've already built the project, right? I've already built it and I'm now going to show it to you. Uh, and this is more like a tutorial, but this is more like, a, you know, like a 10,000 feet view of what we're going to build, right? So I highly recommend you build an architecture before you build the project. But even if you don't do that, just build a 10,000 feet view of the entire project structure or, or the project or how it's going to flow before you actually get started with the code. All right. So uh, now there's with the, with the project planning, let's say of, of the project, you have to define a critical path in the sense, what are the key things that you need to complete to be able to actually uh, call it a, a complete project? So I need to have a logic to create data types, a logic to write data to the database, logic to create files, these files that you can see. All right, there's also the logic to create this folder, uh, but anyhow. And then there's also the logic to write files, write into the files. So this is a file and uh, you create a JSON file and then you can write into the file. So I need to have logic for all those things, right? So that's my critical path to actually create the database. Now, uh, then it has these four different things as well. It has the logic to read a single record from database. This is not my critical path, but these are like good to have items, right? So I'll have to have logic to read a single record if I wanted to from the database. If I want to have, if I want to, want to read all records from a database, I want to have that. If I want to delete one single record from database or delete all records from a database, right? So this is your get by ID, get all, delete by ID, delete all, all right? So you have, you'll have this functionality as well. Now, uh, then you have uh, a struct called as driver. We'll create a driver almost like Mongoose, all right? So we'll create, like if you've used Mongoose with uh, Node.js, you know what I'm talking about. So it's a driver that, uh, you know, almost like, so we're not building an ORM. You can't call it an ORM, but it's like ORM, but it's like a driver that, you know, is, is like the thing between your database and your project. All right. So the driver basically will do the read all and read and, uh, you know, write and delete all. This was supposed to be delete. Sorry. So delete, delete all and write operations. Right. And these all will be struct methods. So if you don't know what struct methods are, I highly recommend you first check them out before you need to know what structs are, pointers, pointers and struct methods, at least these basic things of Golang. If you don't know them, go take a Golang tour. It's a it's a free website, golangtour.com or something like that. Just take the whole tour and understand the basics of Golang. Come back here. All right. 
then you reach data integrity issues so we could have ended the project here but you know i'm, I'm just taking things a little uh you know forward so what we'll do is we'll also handle data integrity issues when you build a database uh, and data integrity issues come with write and delete operations all right so let's say if it's a bank and you put uh, you, it had 200 dollars to begin with you put 100 more dollars into the bank and then you took out 50 dollars now between this operation this operation taking place if there was a write operation happening uh, or or you know some other operation happening it it would interrupt these operations all right so you might uh, so the write uh, you know, value is three fifty dollars because you had hundred dollars. You put uh, what do you call it? Sorry, it should be two fifty dollars, not three fifty dollars, right? So you had hundred dollars. You put two hundred dollars, became three hundred dollars. You took out fifty dollars, became two fifty dollars, right? This is the right value when you read uh, from this bank. This was the right value, but but if this uh, op these operations were happening and you just uh, read it between that, it would show one fifty dollars, right? Which is the wrong value because it was hundred and then you took out fifty dollars because this operation wasn't complete, you know, so you took out $50 and the value became $150. So this is the wrong value. So we want to see this value, not this value. So this is uh, a data integrity issue. And then this can be solved using mutexes. So mutexes basically lock uh, an operation that's happening at that time. And then they don't uh, allow the other operation to, you know, uh, happen at the same time. So if you don't know what mutexes are, there are thousands of videos on YouTube. You can go check them out or maybe I'll create a video on mutex sometime in the future. But there is a channel called Tutorial Edge that uh, has already has mutexes, uh, a video on mutexes. You can go check it out or probably you already know what mutexes are because it's a Golang tutorial and you're watching uh, how to build a, a database from uh, with using Golang so that which is quite advanced, right? So I'm hoping that you already know Golang quite well so, and you already know concurrency like uh, you know go uh, go routines and channels and mutex is already you're aware of them anyhow so this is the entire project this is uh, how the uh, you know how you run the code and this is the entire code and i'll start uh, we'll start creating new project and start building everything from scratch so stay tuned so now we are in a terminal in a place where we usually keep our golang projects and i'll create a directory golang database and then we'll cd into golang database and then we'll initialize this program go mod in it um, github.com slash a kill slash golang database if you need to golang then go mod in it is like npm in it which basically creates uh, a go mod file which is the equivalent of a package.json file which will basically have the list of all the dependencies external dependencies that you plan to use in this project right so let's do that so it says uh, it's added a go.mod file here and we use github.com slash akil because we'll uh, get this entire link as a, a absolute link to um, access all the other files in a project if there are any other files in a project all right so what we'll do is we'll ls and we'll see that there's a go mod file already now what we'll do is we'll open up the code editor i'm using vs code you could be using anything else not a problem and here is where we'll create our main.go file in our main.go file the first few things that you have to do is you have to say make package main and then you have to import the package that we'll be using some will be external some will uh, won't be external packages and then you have your func main which is the most important uh, function in your main go, go file because that's where that's the entry point to the entire project program and then you'll uh, for now i think um, i'll import fmt fmt i, I think it is i probably there's no uh, golang program that can be done with fmt fmt basically is required to print out stuff then i think i'll be using os as well i'll be using uh, encoding json for sure because it's a JSON database, if you remember. All right, it's giving you squiggly lines because we have not used these packages yet. All right, and now what we'll do is we'll start from the basics. The database that I showed you had a collection called users. So first we'll create a struct. We'll create a struct called user. And what will the user have? It'll have a name. So it's a name string. It'll have age. We'll say JSON dot dot number. Then we'll have contact, which will again be string. And then we'll have company. Please know that all of these have a capital uh, first letter. 
which will also be string and then we'll have address which will be of type address so address is another struct so structs are your own data types that you're creating in golang all right so if you need to golang then struct is basically your own data type that you can create and it can be a mix you know it can be a combination it is like it'll have all these different data types uh the different values and they'll be having their own data type like string and string and you know json dot number and along with string and number which are primitive types you can have your own custom defined data types like address so address is another struct that we'll have to now create all right so we'll say type address the reason that i'm creating address as a struct is because i want to keep all of these different details like city string so state again string country string and pin code json that number now a lot of people coming from the javascript background uh, ask me that you know in javascript you don't have to do anything like this you just have objects and you have nested objects and you can directly start working with json inside uh, Java, javascript uh, inside node.js the problem with uh, golang is uh, i won't call it a problem it's, it's just a different way the way the golang is made is that it cannot understand json on its own in the sense uh, it golang has its own uh, data structure called struct so it understands only struct so you have to work with json but you also have to work with struct so you know a json uh, can be used to work with the database but struct is what uh, golang will understand and um, golang does not natively understand json because it's not uh, a javascript framework right like node.js so this is the reason why we have to define our own structs we can't just create an object and a nested object like that you know so we have our own structs which have uh, where we have to define these values like string 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 number and all of those things all right uh, now in the beginning if you're starting out with golang you'll think that this is uh, a painful thing i mean why do i have to do all you know again this again and again but uh, trust me this saves you from so many so many errors because you're com in complete control of how your objects will look like your structures will look like all right you won't appreciate it right now if you're starting out with golang but as you become more advanced uh, you will understand that this is uh, probably the, one of the greatest features of Golang. And then you have, uh, then what I'll do is I'll define the directory. All right. Why I'm doing this is because uh, I will need to tell Golang where do, do I want the folder to be created for those uh, collections and all of those things that I want to be. Uh, want to create right so uh, i showed you in the demo that there's a users collection that create gets created and it gets created out here which is this uh, directory location right so it'll create the collection out here so that's why i'm i'm defining directory out here and then i'll have uh, a function called new so i'll define this function right now don't worry about it all right and that basically is your database so this new function will create your database for you. If you, you already know how to handle errors, if you've been watching my videos, if error is not equal to nil, then we'll print out something here. So we'll say print ln error and we'll print out the error. So far so good. Now we want to hard code our values that we want to uh, you know be stored in our database we can take these values from uh, the command line we can take it from an api right from the front end that can take values or we can hard code the values right now for the purpose of this project so that you are, at least you understand how i'm taking the data and you know putting it into an uh, creating a database out of it right and uh, if you want we can also create uh, like in, in a future video we can also create an api that accepts data but i'm sure you can do it yourself i mean it's very simple very straightforward because i've already shown you how to create apis in hundreds of other videos in golang right so what we'll do here is we'll say we'll take a slice called employees and it's slice of type user capital u mind you because this is user so you are telling golang that i want a slice so slice is basically uh, a very small uh, collection or array you can call it an array it's like an array you know and you have these different values the different values here instead of having an array of objects like in javascript world you'll have an array of this struct called users all right so you'll have this here i'll give i'll keep giving you javascript references because i know a lot of people uh, who are watching these videos already have a javascript background because javascript is like the most common programming language and then people get frustrated with javascript and that's why they come to golang right so i know my target audience so I'll <laughs> try to keep things like that. And so uh, here, 
we know that it needs, needs to have a name, age, contact, company, and address, right? So name is John, age is 23. Now you'll, you'll ask, you'll probably wonder that, you know, it's supposed to be number, but I'm giving it as a string. It's because um, it's a string for uh, Golang, but uh, at JSON will be a number. So that's why I say JSON number. But when I when we'll actually create the database and you'll have those values, you'll see those values. You'll come to know that, there's, that those are numbers, JSON numbers, not strings. But for Golang right now, all I'm doing is is I'm keeping it as strings so that everything stays very very uh, you know easy. And I will have a contact number here. It can be a string, it can be a number, up to you. And then we'll uh, put the name of the company. Name of the company can be. So I'll put my own uh, company called Multech, and then we'll have uh, the address. The address is, let's say, Bangalore, and the state is Karnataka. So uh, when I say address, I'll have to use city, state, country, and pin code, right? So I'll have to uh, I'll have to say that this is of type address, and then it has a city, state, and country and has a pin code pin code again can be a number or can be a string uh it's in my case it's a number but right now for golang you know it's it's a string so you have to put a comma here um, and then we can put a few more uh, records here in our database so we'll i think we'll put like six records probably put a comma put one more comma, put one more so we have what six records you can put eight ten fifteen hundred whatever you want and I'll just change the name of these guys. All right, I'll say Paul, 25. Company name is Google. This is Microsoft. This is. Uh, so I highly uh, recommend that you code along with me. So while I'm changing these companies, you can also do that the same. I'll put my other two companies. So I'm uh, a CDO at Remote Teams and Dominate. These are two different companies. And this is the company I'm a founder at. I have also founded these two companies. These I'm the CTO at these two different tech products. These are both SaaS products, all right. So here I'll just put uh, different addresses now quickly, and also change the name of these guys. So we'll use um, you know Robert. Let's put Vince, and then put uh, Neil. Let's put Albert. Change their ages as well. So 27, 29, 31, 32. And uh, so this can be quite cumbersome. You can feel free to change. But I think what I should do is I, I should actually change it because otherwise you'll feel like the database has not been created and it's probably the same uh, you know value being repeated. So that so just keep different values here so that you can uh, you know catch errors. So that's why it's recommended to cre create at least one value which is different. So we'll say California and USA. Right, so at least one value is different so that when the database gets created uh, if we'll come to know that you know the address field is not getting repeated everywhere and that it's not a bug so that's why it's recommended to keep at least one different value all right now what we'll do is we'll uh, so we have a struct of employees which is of type user now what we'll do is we'll range over all of those employees so we'll say for and for the iterator i'll use a blank character probably sure you already know what the blank character is used for it's basically you know if you're not using a particular value in golang you can't just define it and not use it you have to use a blank character otherwise uh, golang will give you other uh, a lot of types of errors um, this is because uh, golang is compiled and in the real time it'll tell you you know what the errors are so that uh, you know it's a strict type language right you already know that not like javascript where you can do anything and get away with anything and obviously then you'll have hundreds of errors also to solve with golang you, you can't do that and it's a good thing you can't do that so here it's uh, giving me a squiggly line basically because i have to put a comma here at the end so uh, when you're defining a slice like this at the end uh, struct you have to put a comma like this and the squiggly line goes away so here you have value so each of the uh, values uh, once I range over this employees struct each of these values this whole value is I'll have that access to that in something called its value all right now I'll range over employees and then we'll say DB dot right users comma value dot name it's not value it's value value dot name and then you'll say user so what we're saying here is 
take this collection so we have to by the way we have to create this function called write so we'll create this database function called write i've already shown you the diagram of all of the functions that we'll be creating so write is obviously the most important function right so we'll have write read all read delete delete all all, those, all of those functions right so in the write function we'll say that in the collection collection called users um, create uh, take this value name which is john paul all these uh, names and use these to create the name of the file so if you remember the, the demo that i just showed you like a few minutes back you'll see that uh, there was a folder called users that came up and then each of those files uh, or the records in those uh, in that folder were the names of the people so we, that's why we're using value.name all right and here for the user we'll say name so how do you get the name you get name which is value dot name right so you're adding one user at a time so the first user has a uh, name which is we can access that by you the help of value and the value will have a name which is john all right and then you have age which will be again value dot age now uh, just reference you can also like take this database that you just created which we'll create at by the end of this video and you can actually start using it in your projects in the sense uh, create apis instead of using like a mysql or uh, you know, Postgres, use this database. Uh, you'll have to uh, do some fa refactoring with the code, but uh, you can easily use it. I've tried it in a project. It works uh, you know, perfectly all right. It's quite stable as well. So that's a huge, huge thing. If you want to, you know, create an API of this uh, database and start, start selling it as a, you know, database API, feel free to do that or to launch your own database if you want. Do whatever the hell you want. You can, you know, feel free to uh, make any changes to this code as you want. So we'll have uh, value dot contact and then you have company value dot company comma address value dot address okay. and we put a comma at the end so it's pretty good and then let's also create uh, so we have a function uh, called write which we'll, we're calling from our function and we'll also create a function called read all right which we'll call from here so we'll say db dot read all let's say users so we basically want to read all the users and then we'll capture that value in a value called records and then we'll just print out the records but before that we'll just check for error so if error is not equal to nil You'll say fmt dot print ln. We'll print out the error. Come on, err. Otherwise, you'll print out the records. Perfect. Okay. And. If you want to find, um, actually, we'll have to do one more thing. So we'll say all users equal to user. So we'll create an empty uh, slice, empty slice, the slice uh, of type user, which is empty right now. And we'll take that in this um, variable called all users. And what we'll do is we'll range over the records that we've just received here. Okay, these records that we printed out and we'll range over these. To range over these, you already know what's required. You'll have to say for and another value here. So you'll get all of those records in something called as f and the iterator. We're using a blank iterator because you don't want to define it and then not use it. So we'll use a blank iterator here. And we'll say employee found equal to user so each employee that's being found is of type user. That's a variable that we have taken. And here, what we'll say is if error JSON dot unmarshal byte f comma and employee found error or equal to nil. So let me first write down and explain to you what's happening here. It's very, very straightforward actually. So we'll say fmt dot print ln and then we'll say error and comma error. Alright. And here we'll say 
um, here we'll say all users equal to append all users comma sorry the u is small out here so it's all users comma employee found so we already found the records using read all and we printed the records the problem here is that the records that we found from the database are in json all right and to be able to use it inside golang uh, you'll have to convert it from json into uh, and a format that's understood by golang by th with the help of unmarshalling function now we're not uh, using the data here right now as of now as in we're not doing anything with that data but i've just written this code just for that uh, you know so that if you actually want to use this database somewhere uh, you'll have to you know unmarshal it you've already seen a lot of my videos which uh, probably which uh, you know uh, help you to, to, to work with a mongodb database or postgres or uh, mysql there are hundreds of videos that i've created right so uh, you probably already know that uh, the data uh, let's say uh, in a database like mongodb is stored in json and then you get it from you'll have to unmarshal it all right and um, after unmarshaling it you can use it in your projects and we'll quickly print it out as well so we'll say fmt dot println all users all right we can also um, create delete one and delete all users function and but we'll keep them commented out for now so what we'll do is we'll say db dot delete and so delete a user of name john and then we'll say if error not equal to nil and then we'll say fmt dot print ln print ln and we'll say error comma error here we'll say if error is equal to all right and this will basically help us delete one user from the database then we if you want to delete all the users, users from the database so we'll say delete user empty string we'll say error not equal to nil if empty dot print ln error comma error now these two functions can be called using an api so you can make an api and then uh, you know that those apis can basically in the func handle uh, handler function you can call these uh, functions and call uh, and basically read stuff from the api if you want all right we'll keep them commented out for now because we want the users uh, data to be created and printed out and then if you want to delete them we'll comment them out and then delete data from here okay so what we'll do now is we'll say we'll go to the top of the project and we'll give it a version number so let's say const version is equal to 1.0.1 .1. and then here i'll import uh, a package so i'd imported a package called os but i saved it so it just went away i'll re-import it and i'll say sync because i want to use mutexes so i have to use the sync package for the mutexes and then i want to import an external package so i have to say github.com slash jc elliot slash lumber so this is a logger uh, package that helps us to create a logger all right and what i'll do is i'll go here and i'll say um, go get github.com slash jc elliot slash lumber all right so it's added the package for us you can also see this go.sum file created so go.sum file is like your package.log.json which 
has the list of the dependencies for the dependencies in your go dot mod file right so if you're from a javascript background this is this is your package.json file this is your package.log.json file make sense so back to our project <clears throat> so we've created a uh, version number here let's keep it 1.0.0 actually and now i'll have to uh, create some uh, you know create a logger basically so i'll say type and set so this type i can create instead of writing type type again again i can you know write type once and i can create a logger and i can create a driver so i shown you in the diagram uh, when we were starting the project that there's a driver that we're going to be using right the driver will be the one that'll be responsible for actually uh you know uh, what do you call it uh, we basically driver is the thing that between your code and the database right so so for the logger what you have to say is it's of type interface it's an interface basically and then there are a couple of things right so the type of things that you can do like these are the options basically so you can have either a fatal uh, message that you want to display using the logger so you'll say interface or you could have an error or you could have a warning you could have info you could have debug you could have trace for error you'll have string and dot 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 interface for warning you'll again have string and dot 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 interface for info the same thing debug also string come dot 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 interface and trace string comma dot 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 interface all right now we have to create a driver so the driver is of type struct and it has a mutex so as you already know we're using mutexes to uh, you know write and delete have a mutex and it's a sync dot mutex then you have mutexes which is a map which has string and has a pointer to sync dot mutex and then you have a directory which is a string sorry just string and then you have log, which is of type logger. So log is of type logger. Directory is a string. Directory is basically in which we'll be uh, creating the project, uh, the database. Then you have a mutex and you have uh, mutexes, which is basically strings and then uh, pointer to mutexes, all right? So then there's also one more thing called options. So we'll say type options type struct and here we'll give uh, it's of type logger basically it has logger so logger we've already defined and here it's giving us a squiggly line because i've kept uh, s uh, capital by mistake so it's small s so we have a logger now we have a driver and we have options which basically has logger all right and now um, as you already know we have we'll have a few functions right so one function is new it's going to accept a couple of parameters it's going to return a couple of, a couple of parameters and it's going to have a function definition so this function hopefully will help us to create a new uh, basically initialize stuff and create a new database and that kind of stuff right and then we'll have the write function which is the most important because this helps us to write stuff in the database it's going to accept a couple of things. It's going to return something. It's going to have a function definition. It's not going to return a couple of things, uh, as in, in the sense I won't have a bracket where it's going to return things. It just has, it just returns one thing, which is error, right? So if uh, it accepts some things and writes to the database, if it does, if it's not able to write, it just returns an error. That's all. It's a very simple function. Then you have func write, sorry, func read. 
again accepts couple of things just returns the error then you have read all accepts couple of things returns couple of things and has a function definition then you have the delete function accepts a couple of things it's not able to delete it just returns an error that is it and then we'll have a function to get or create mutex so if the mutex exists you can just get it or if it doesn't exist you can create new mutex takes something and then returns a uh, pointer to sync.mutex it has a function definition all right so these are the functions that we need to work on one two three four five six and we have the outline of these functions now one very important thing is that these are not just functions you know uh, at least these ones the write read and all these functions are not functions these are actually struct methods so you'll have to say here D and percentage sorry asterisk driver so this is how you define a struct method which basically says that struct is driver and these are methods for that struct okay right and read and all those things so that's why when you access these uh, functions like write and read you don't just call them directly you say db dot read all you say db dot write because these are uh, struct methods right uh, methods that belong to that struct so this is a very easy simple straightforward concept in uh, golang if you don't know what struct methods are do take a look and read is also d uh, asterisk driver then you have your read all function which again has the same thing d asterisk driver and then you have your delete function then you have a get or create mirex is the same thing the asterisk driver so these five different functions are all struct methods and not just simple straightforward functions all right so now let's start working on the functions one by one so for the new function so the new function does not only just create a database for us but it also returns a driver uh, that we want to use to interact with the database later on right so it just returns a driver to us or it sends us back an error and it takes a directory because it wants to create the database at the directory location and then it takes some options you just created here which is basically the logger only so we'll start with a variable called directory and we'll say file path dot clean directory all right and then we'll say options which is just opts is equal to opt is type of options but it's empty right now all right now i just realized that file path uh, we have not included in our uh, project so let's do that so we'll say path slash file path it's another package and let's come back here so we'll say options and then <coughs> if options not equal to nil Yes. Pointer to options. All right. And if OPTS dot logger equal to equal to nil, then OPTS dot logger 
is equal to number dot new console logger number dot info basically getting the logger uh, as of now then we'll create a driver will be of type driver and then let's pass the uh, various information right so directory is directory here so as you know in driver uh, you know we'll pass the directory to dir and for mutexes we'll say make a mutex map string and ampersand sync dot mutex this one directory and mutexes all right and now we have to also give the logger so we'll say log options dot logger all right and now if we'll check if the database exists if the database exists then we'll just use it directly so we'll use a function called os.stat and we'll send a directory uh, inside that function to check if it exists or not and here we'll say if pts dot logger dot debug so using percentage s database already exists new line comma directory so directory is basically the location and if the database already exists we'll just uh you know say the name of the database where it already exists all right and then we'll say return ampersand driver comma nil all right so sorry i clicked on something else so we'll pass the name of the directory to be placed at this location and if that directory exists, then it's going to say that database already exists. And it's going to use this stat function to find that out. And but if, if everything is all right, then we'll say uh, yeah, that means if the database doesn't exist, then we'll create it. So we'll say opts dot logger dot debug creating the database at percentage s slash n comma tir and we'll return ampersand driver comma os dot mk dir all zero seven five five so this is the access permission zero seven five five and we'll use the os package we, we've already installed that <coughs> this is wrong I mean this is not supposed to be here so we'll use the OS package to uh, create a new directory with the name of directory that we've just passed and add a string to this new function so if the function if the database didn't exist we create a new deba database otherwise you know the database already existed so we'll keep using that that's what this function is doing simply so what we can do now is we can I think work on the stat function as well so um, let's create that here so I'll say func stat you send the path here at string os dot file info comma error which is of type error and we'll say os dot stat path start
just stat path plus json so the database that we'll create will have a dot json at the end the database that we'll create will have those files with json at the end so this function all it's doing is it's checking if uh, it's a uh, you know it checks for the directory if it's uh, you know not, not a directory then it checks for the file with json all right that's what this function does and we'll use this function a couple of times so don't worry about uh, you know if you don't understand it don't worry you'll just understand it very quickly now when we create when we use it a couple of times so in the right function what we'll do is we'll get the name of the collection so if you see where we had used the right function see this is the name of the collection right so you take the name of the collection here and the resource and then we get something called as v which is an interface this is our resource and this is our entire interface the resource will be the name basically one by one when we we'll call this function <coughs> in that range loop we'll use that resource to create the name of the uh, file or right, inside the folder so we'll say if collection is empty then we'll say return if empty dot error f missing collection no place to save the record so if we don't pass a collection then we'll say you know there's no place to uh, pass the record and then we'll say if resource is equal to is equal to nil let's return fmt dot error f missing resource unable to save record and there's no name for the resource all right and then <coughs> while writing as you know we'll be using mutex so we'll say mutex is equal to d dot get or create mutex which is the function that we'll write in some time so we'll say d.get.create dot dot create mutex and then for that collection and here you'll say mutex dot lock and uh, when this function ends so we'll use defer function is used when you want something to run at the end of the function we'll say mutex dot unlock so only when uh, the write function has completed uh, till then everything is locked but only when it's completed then it'll unlock otherwise and it won't allow anything else to uh, you know work with the database all right so this is what i'd shown you in the diagram when we started the project that this is how we'll be using mutexes and we'll take a variable called directory and then we'll use our file path uh, function to join the directory and the collection and the final path is file path dot join directory comma resource plus dot json so when i showed you the uh, demo i showed you that inside the folder which will be the directory inside that folder there will be uh, the name of uh, each record like let's say john paul robert so we'll take each of those records and we'll create a dot json file after that Right, so that's what's exactly what's happening out here. And then the temporary path is equal to final path plus dot tmp. All right. Now we'll create the collection directory. So we'll say if error is equal to is equal to os dot mkdir directory zero seven five five and then we'll say 
is equal to append now we are writing inside the file so we'll say append everything on a new line if error is equal to ioutil dot write file we'll use the temporary path b comma 0644 the permission that we require to write on the line uh, in the file return err right so iutil package i think is still not included by us so we'll go here we'll say io slash io util okay so what's happening here in the right uh, method is that not only are we creating uh, the file with the, the .json uh, extension but we are also writing inside that file all right and uh, but before that uh, we've missed one step actually we'll have to say b comma error json dot marshal so we'll have to marshal all that data because we want to write the data in json right so we'll say v comma empty string the tab if error not equal to nil return error so we'll get the data here in this v interface all the data that's coming here that we are just uh, you know converting into json and then we're just writing and just we are including that in b and b basically ensures that everything is written uh, to the next line and then you just write everything to the file using iotil you use the write file function and then you write to the file so you create um, a, a file with the name of the the name that you're passing here the name of the employee and then you pass this whole thing as an interface and then this is printed uh, and th this is written into the file on next 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 line like that right so very very uh, simple and now we'll start working with our read read all delete and get our create mutex functions so first let's work on the get or create mutex function so this function takes in collection which is of type string and now you can see here your write function you were calling get or create mutex and you're passing the collection and it returns a mutex so you remember that mutex is, is a map right it's a map so whatever is um, corresponding to the collection that is in past will return that basically so we'll capture that in a value called m and there will be also something called as ok so if this mutex doesn't exist which means that if not ok then what we'll say is m is equal to ampersand sync dot mutex basically create an empty mutex for us and d dot mutex is collection is equal to m and all you're doing is basically returning m and here you'll have to say d dot mutex dot lock and defer d dot mutex dot unlock all right so that's your get or create mutex function and now let's work on the rest of the functions like read read all and delete so we have only three functions now left so for the read function what we'll do is we'll accept collection and we'll accept resource which is of type string and an interface and it does an error all right and here also let's do the 
same thing which is if collection is empty I think we didn't say anything for the collection then we'll say return f empty dot error f missing collection no uh, place to save record that means there was not a no place to save the record and if resource is equal to empty let's return f empty dot error f again missing resource unable to save record no name and if and to get the record we'll say file path dot join d dot directory comma collection comma resource we'll make it equal to the record and we'll use our we'll check if the file exists so we'll use our uh, stat function which we just created so we'll say is equal to stat and record as the record exist error if error is not equal to nil we'll say return error that means if error is there then we'll return the error otherwise read the record from the database all right T to read the record from the database you'll have to use ioutil function dot iutil fi uh, uh, package not read file function and you'll record plus dot json you'll read the record all right and you'll say b comma error so we'll capture that value in b while writing also if you remember we captured the value in b and we wrote it now while reading it also we're doing the same thing we wrote we use the write file function after creating uh, converting it into json now we're just using the read file function as simple as that right and if error not equal to nil we will return the error otherwise we will return json dot on marshall p comma ampersand v all right so we're basically turning uh an unnatural value from it so our database is in json right so when we read, read from it and then we uh, return something it has to be in a format that's understood by uh, golang so that uh, we're not using it right now but maybe you want to use it in the future so that's why we'll have an unmarshaled uh, response basically from this read function in a write function we have to do one small little thing so this is the write function and at the end we have to move the final file into place so we'll say return os dot rename temp path comma final path all right so we've we're done with the write and read function so write function is the most important one and so new function is important write is the most important one and read we have already done it's quite simple now we want to work on our read all function so read all is going to be very similar to read so let's get started so we'll say it's going to accept collection string it's going to return a string slice slice of strings and comma error the slice of strings is basically the data the read all data basically everything from the database is going to be returned as a string of uh, slice of strings all right and the thing that you pass to read and read all functions right is basically the collection so that's why we have said collection here so in, in our case is the user's collection so you want to read something from the user's collection now if the collection is empty obviously you'll say that you know uh, the 
collection is empty. So we'll say return nil. In, instead of this, nil will be returned because it didn't find anything because there was no collection. We didn't give it a collection to read from. And the error that we'll get will be missing collection, right? Unable to read. Here also we can say unable to read. So earlier we were saying unable to uh, no place save record, which means that there was uh, you didn't send a place uh, where you know from which to read the record. But I think more apt message is unable to read, right? And here also I think you can say unable to read actually to read record, right? I was trying to keep it consistent with write, but I don't think it should be consistent. Should be unable to read. Anyhow, so if collection is not there, then missing collection unable to read, and then we'll say directory is equal to file path dot join. So in case you've not understood what's happening here, you know we're doing this in. Um, uh, the, the other functions as well right as you can see it's basically um, going to the directory and it's uh, you know joining the collection to it so collection name like users will be a folder right inside this current directory so we'll take the directory and the collection name so that you know uh, you'll have the actual directory in dir the users directory in which all the different records will be present and from this directory is where you want to read all the records from right so this is what's happening in case you didn't understand i mean I, I i don't think i explained it before because i think it was very very straightforward so that's why i didn't explain but then i realized that probably you know uh, you don't know how file path and all those uh, this this library works this is a very common library by the way i've used it so many times that i uh, you know i already know how you know what all of these functions are but probably you don't have an idea if you don't have an idea then i suggest you go to file path uh, you know the in, in the on the golang website file path package just read about it what it does and it's a very simple library. It's very, very commonly used. If you've been working with Golang, obviously you already know what this is. And we created this function called stat in which we pass our directories. So we'll say if blank character error is equal to stat and directory and error not equal to nil, then we'll say return nil and comma error. So, as you know, the, our start start function that we have already created it basically checks if the collection or the directory exists, right? If it doesn't exist, then obviously we're just saying we're returning nil and we're returning the error. And now we'll start reading the entire directory. We want all the records on the directory. So we'll say io util. Iutil is another very very common package with Golang. If you don't know how it works, go to Golang's website read about iutil it has a function called read directory and we want to read the entire directory so we'll use this read directory function and then we're going to capture that value in files and this blank character for error then let's take a variable called records which is of a slice of type string and we'll range over these files now. So let's range over them. We'll say range files. And iutil.read file. Just a second. So we'll say for. So to range over files, we need for. And each of this, uh, each of the values of files will be in file so this is the iterator we don't want to use the iterator so we're just using a blank character but we want to use the actual value one by one so this is file so uh, this type of a loop the range loop in golang is very similar to uh, the combination of for in loop and for off loop the combination of both of them 
in uh, JavaScript. So it, with the help of for in loop, you can access the iterator. With the help of for off loop, you can access the actual value that's going to, uh, you know, every single value that comes out from the array. And uh, this for loop in uh, Golang gives you access to both at the same time, the iterator as well as the value, in case uh, you're not aware. So here what we'll do is we'll say file path dot join directory comma file dot name. So this file, uh, you know, so all the files that are in that folder, we will have access to them one by one and they'll have a name, right? Like let's say John or Paul or all of those. So those names basically we want to, uh, you know, uh, create here with the file path and then we want to read that particular file. So iutil has read director, uh, read directory, read file, write file, all of these functions. So I'm, I'm hoping that everything is clear to you now, but if you don't understand anything here, uh, do put it in the comments below. I'm trying to explain every single line as we uh, go along, but in case you know you don't understand anything, please feel free to leave a, uh, leave a comment so that I can help you out, or I can explain to you if, if uh, you know something is not clear. Like you can write big comments also, like you know, hey, I didn't understand this particular line. Why did we use file path, or why are we using the read file functions? Because here we're using the read. So I'll just explain to you again. You, we are reading the entire directory, and uh, the direct directory will have so many different files, right? Our entire database is uh, is a directory with multiple JSON files, and each JSON file we can access using the directory, which is the name of like let's say users, and then the file name. Uh, which is you know uh, something dot json like john dot json paul dot json right you, when you saw and I showed you the demo of the product you could you could see that there were uh, different records being created with the name of each of those records that we are sending so that's how we can access each file and we want to read that uh, exact that particular file so that's why using iutil dot read file right in case you're not understanding any of these lines do let me know all we have to do now is append to records records we already defined it's a slice of strings so we can append string b to it quite straightforward and here if everything goes well we will return records and comma nil great so our read all function is complete get our read matrix is complete our stat function is complete write function is complete read is complete and all, almost the entire project is complete except for one function, which is the delete function. And as you can see right now, we just have one squiggly line here because we don't have a definition for this function yet. And we have only one error in our file. Everything else seems to be uh, doing okay. But these are again syntactical errors. But uh, when we will run the program, we'll get more other, other compile time errors and we'll have to fix them. And I can tell you that there will be many errors right if they're not errors uh, there are no errors then we should be surprised if there are errors everything is all right if you're a developer get used to seeing a lot of errors <laughs> so we'll solve them together not an issue all right so here we'll have delete and in the delete function you'll send the collection obviously and you'll set the resource or the exact value or the file that you want to create uh, delete from the function so the same uh, drill we'll take the path will be file path dot join collection comma resource so in the delete function if you remember what we do is we pass the collection and the resource we want to delete so that's why we're creating a file path first for it we have that in path and i'm not sure if we created uh, the mutex in the right yeah so we created the mutex so we'll have to do the same with delete so we'll say mutex is it d dot get or create mutex and we'll pass the collection here mutex dot lock it's a differ mutex unlock perfect here we'll say file path dot join D dot directory comma path and here we'll say so 
first we'll have to check if the file exists or not so we'll say switch if i comma error case if i equal to equal to nil fmt dot error f unable to find the file all right so file uh, if the file is nil and there's no error then we'll say unable to find file or directory named percentage v come on path that's the first thing you do when you're deleting something right the, f the file needs to be there so that you can delete it and then we'll have another case we'll say case f i dot mode is directory return 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 dot os dot remove all directory all right so this is to delete the entire directory itself so when we say delete all and when we pass this empty string here then that basically deletes the entire directory instead of one one file all right and then we have case fi dot mode dot is regular return os dot remove all directory plus dot json so this is basically removing all of the uh, files inside that folder all right and then you have closing bracket and return nil so this bracket instead of getting completed here gets completed here now everything looks okay it's saying this it could be a here a string should not end with punctuation or a new line uh, we'll have to investigate why it's saying that and we already have our path here everything looks all right to me as of now what we can do is we can try running this program and see what what happens you know so we'll head over to our terminal and we'll say uh, go run main dot go oh everything worked <laughs> so there's something uh, wrong because everything worked <laughs> right so we we've created our database we've written to our database and all of these uh, files have been created as you can see with the help of our our read function and at the end we're also calling our uh, sorry with the help of our write function and at the end we're also calling the read function so what you see here is basically your read function uh, taking place, right? So like this, it's printing all the all users, and this is not JSON. This you know is JSON, but this is not JSON. This is uh, your struct. That's why it looks like this, and it's printing all the users here. Now we can try deleting them as well. So let's try deleting them. Let's try deleting John. Let's see what happens. So we'll run it again. Something is wrong, it seems. Oh, here. Let me also uh, see on the entire program if everything, anything else is wrong. That may be leading to an issue here. In the delete function. Oh, I think everything seems to be okay to me. So let's run it again. And you will find user John. Whereas we already have John. Is it because our John is uh, capital John? Yeah, I think that's the reason. So we will have to say capital John. And now hopefully it will be able to recognize John. Again, it's not able to find John and lead him. 
uh, let's try and investigate what the issue is I think I found the issue so it's not user it's users so when we run it now hopefully we're able to delete John oh, I see John sorry <laughs> oh, I didn't uncomment it <laughs> so when we delete so yeah John is not there anymore right and uh, let's try deleting all of the users let's see how that goes so no users are there I deleted all of the users and it deleted the entire directory as well so everything is gone all right so our program works perfectly fine there are no errors no issues and you've been able to create a database from scratch which uh, you can connect it with APIs and uh, everything will work perfectly fine but the database will keep yeah, getting created out here in a, in a document manner this is very similar to how MongoDB works by the way it creates a folder for collection and then uh, you know single JSON files for each uh, record in the collection so I hope you learned something amazing in this video and uh, thanks, for lot, thanks a lot for watching do subscribe to this channel so that you keep coming to know when awesome videos like these come out and we have so much more stuff uh, going to be that's going to come out with you know data structures and algorithms and golang all of that stuff and also full stack projects do take a look around in this channel we have more than 100 uh, golang videos thanks a lot for watching and see you in the next uh, video